to be and uh, follow your journey the way God intended for that journey to uh, take place. So uh, uh, give me one second. I'm, I'm inviting also some of the people in from Black Enough. Black Enough, B-L-A-G-G-E-N-U-F. Black Enough is our uh, social media platform. As you know, Facebook is tripping. Uh, Facebook trips all the time. And so uh, we had to create our own social media platform. So we have a Black Facebook. Uh, if you want to join and be a part of the conversations that happen on Black Enough, you can go to blackenough.com. That's B-L-A-G-G-E-N-U-F. B-L-A-G-G-E-N-U-F. So somebody please type that in. Um, okay. All right. So let, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's get, get it cracking. Hit that thumbs up button if you're on YouTube. <clears throat> What's up, OIN? And that's my car and Chaz Chaz and John, John L. and Key Lime and Ed, Ed for Educators and Alonzo Johnson and everybody else. Yeah, I, my reaction, oh, Sh Shemaya says, uh, uh, Shemaya says, I love you. Oh, God, I, I love you too. Thank you very much, sister. That, that warms my heart. It wakes me up in the morning. Um, uh, okay, so so let let's talk about you know what what's on on the 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 agenda for today. It's kind of sad to have to talk about this because you know you you hate to see something like this happen to someone like that. You know you hate to hear um, that you know, a, a man that that is as respected and as esteemed as Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, that, that he's sort of been hit with the cloud of these uh, really uh, problematic allegations. Um, uh, but, but you know, at the same time, I, I want to kind of talk about it in a way where we can sort of process it in a way that's different from the way I think the media might process this. Uh, you know, I, I think that the interesting thing about Degrassi Tyson that uh, is, is, is fascinating to me about how this is going to play out is, you know, he's kind of like every everybody's favorite white man. You know, he's Neil Degrassi Tyson. Yeah, he's a brother, but you know, he's everybody's favorite white man. And, uh, and, uh, but he's, it's not his fault. It's not that he's, I, I never thought of him as an uncle Tom or a sellout or nothing like that. But, um, you know, uh, at the same time, he's everybody's favorite white man. You know, he gets to go into places that, uh, black people like me, <laughs> they got a picture, they got a picture of me at the door saying, saying, yeah, you know, do not let this Negro in under any circumstances by any means necessary, keep him out. Whereas Neil deGrasse Tyson is the guy that, is able to navigate those spaces. You know, he's able to go in and, and white folks love him, you know, and I think that that um, can be a, a, you know, a benefit and a curse. You know, it's a benefit in terms of economic opportunity, but it's a curse in terms of the fact that you're living in a glass house. You're living in a glass house of this thing called a career that you build and you build all this, um, uh, all, you know, all this, uh, this fame and respect and credibility and they exalt you and they elevate you and they tell you how wonderful you are and you get to say mama I made it look at me I'm on national tv and the problem though is that um you know that basically uh if you live if you live by the sword you die by the sword you know uh you know you you live you live by the white supremacist system you die by the white supremacist system you know you you live by um by their processes their you know their their opportunity sets that's how you also can go down very quickly, very, go down and die. Um, and so uh, I, I think, you know, as I'm looking at this, and, and I'm going to read the article to kind of describe the allegations a little bit more to you so you can kind of know exactly what happens, what's happened here. Because I think it's important to look at each allegation one by one instead of saying, oh, there's all these allegations and there's a million allegations from a million women who said a million things. No, let, let's look at them one by one. You know, you got to look at them one by one, uh, you know, when they happen, you know, what evidence that there is, et cetera in order to get a complete picture. Like, uh, you know, and, and, and it doesn't mean that that it's a matter of trying to automatically, just in a knee jerk kind of reaction, stand up for Neil deGrasse Tyson and say, oh no, Neil would never do this. Neil is a great guy. I don't know this man. All I know, he could be Ricky the Rapist. You know, he could be literally, uh, you know, the guy that just, you know, sees women and just can't control himself and just lunges on top of them and does whatever, you know, behind closed doors. We don't know this, right? And I think that just out of the respect for those who uh, have uh, you had, you had to come forth with the accusations, you have to sort of make sure you're clear about that. Because let's just be real. There are real rapists out here. There, there, you know, there are a lot of them. There have always been rapists. You know, it's not anything new. It's not unique to the U.S. It's not something that just sort of happened yesterday. Rapists have been around since there have been people, right? So uh, and since sex, <laughs> since God invented sex, there's been, there have been rapists. There have been people who've taken it, just like there are people who steal food. And since food was invented, somebody was stealing food. So ultimately, at the end of the day, I think that you can have a conversation about a Degrassi Tyson and the accusations without it being uh, overly one-sided. Uh, but, you know, here's the thing. I think that what is challenging, though, 
Uh, and this is me also speaking as uh, I'm, I'm a scholar like Neil. Uh, I, I've seen Neil's work. I've never had an issue with Neil. I'm, I'm also a space enthusiast. So as a space enthusiast, I have seen Degrassi Tyson's work uh, in a multitude of, of, of contexts. He always does a great job. I mean, the man is is brilliant at what he does and that that hasn't changed, you know, uh, and, and um, you know, and also, you know, I'm, I'm a black man too, you know, so I, I, I you know, I look at the, the brother and I'm kind of thinking, huh, this is interesting. I wonder how this is going to play out for you. Um, because, because, you know, the thing is, I can say that Tyson operates in spaces where I do not feel safe. You know, it's almost like uh, Tiger Woods, Bill Cosby and OJ Simpson, before they all went down, I looked at all of them and said, wow, I don't know how you do it. I don't, I don't think I could do what you're doing. I don't, I don't think I could run with the people you're running with. I don't think, you know, I could date Becky uh, like you can. I, I don't think I could do the things that you're doing. I, I just, you know, and, and, and so part of me would say, well, gosh, maybe there's a limitation on my part. Maybe I'm not able to, uh, you know, to properly integrate, you know, in this society. Maybe there's something wrong with me. I used to think that. And then I eventually realized, no, there's, it's not that there's something wrong with me. It's that there's something wrong with, with us, right? There's something wrong with us. Uh, we as black people, our number one goal has been to get right next to, uh, right next to the white man. You know, our goal has been, you know, to, to, to get that validation that we need to, to get access to resources that, uh, that other, the other people possess. And the problem is that that puts you in that trap of racism. And the trap of racism is that you become affected by what Dr. Claude Anderson refers to in poweronomics as meritorious manumission. Meritorious manumission goes back to slavery. It's when black people in white supremacist systems were rewarded by, uh, for supporting those white supremacist systems. Black people are rewarded for being non-threatening and supportive of the white agenda. And so to that extent, uh, you know, if you talk about non-threatening, I mean, Neil deGrasse Tyson is about as non-threatening of a black man that, as there is. I mean, you know, you, you never heard him run out with a black fist, you know, talking about, you know, black people need to fight for our rights and or or that oppression is wrong and you need to stop mistreating black people. Neil deGrasse Tyson's not that guy. You know, he's the guy that just does his job um, and uh, and white folks love him. And um, and there's and there are rewards that come with that. That's the meritorious manumission. Um, the downside of that, though is that when you're operating in a different space in a different system, you're gonna sort of be affected by different rules and different cultures and different ways of doing things. And so in that space, in that space of white supremacist institutions, uh, you know, the biggest threat to the existence and the success of the black male typically, uh, in many cases, is not just the oppression of, of the white male. You know, we, we know what that does, we know what that looks like, but it's also uh, the oppression of the coming from the white female. Uh, it goes back to slavery. You know, if you ever wanted to find a really quick way to get killed during slavery, just let a white woman accuse you of grabbing her butt. You know, if you ever wanted to get killed during slavery, just let, just let a white woman uh, go out and, and, and do something slutty and then blame, you know, blame it on you so that her husband doesn't know that she's a hoe, right? Uh, you know, if you ever want to die during, get your balls cut off, during slavery, just go go whistle at a white woman. And you ain't even gotta do it, actually. You just have to be accused of it. Remember, Black Wall Street got burned down. It got burned down and destroyed. What would today be probably $50 billion in property was destroyed in a couple of days because a white woman falsely accused a black man of touching her on an elevator. So you are such um, you are such a, a low, low level form of, 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 of species that if you even touch me, that then gives me the right to destroy you. If you, especially if you did it on purpose, but in the black wall street situation, she, it, 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 the, the accusation was that, that it kind of happened by accident. It happened by accident. So, so my point in all this is to say that, uh, when you compare that and you move forward to the me too movement. Right. This is there's a connection here. This is not uh, in a, I'm not speaking on these uh, these issues in a vacuum. When you look at the Me Too movement, what's happening in the Me Too movement? What are the what are most of the accusations in the Me Too movement? Most of the accusations of the Me Too movement are not, you know, he pulled a gun out on me and he raped me, uh, you know, in, in, the, in, in the middle of Times Square or or he or I know that that's kind of weird. But but, um, you know, or, you know, or we were on a date 
and, uh, and, and, and I was forced to have sex with him. You know, those, those are pretty horrible allegations and, and allegations like that, if they're proven, can't be justified on any level. But most of the Me Too allegations are typically coming from white females and those who align with them, maybe black feminists, uh, who say things like, uh, he grabbed my ass at a party in 2008, right? Or, um, or, or he said something, he, he said the word penis on the job and my fragile little mind kind of freaked out and melted because I just don't know what a dick is. And I heard the word dick and I just, I was so shattered and traumatized that I needed therapy for the next 20 years because my boss said the word penis uh, or brought up the word penis on the job, right? Like, like it's very, it doesn't mean that these things are, are appropriate, right? If, if, you, if you got a job, if you, if brothers, look, if you got a if you got a gig, you got a job, whatever. Don't be talking about your dick at work. Like that's just not good. That's not good etiquette. Don't do that, right? But at the same time, what if it happens? What if somebody tells a joke that has a sexual tone to the joke? Does that make you equivalent to a rapist? What if, if somebody makes a remark and says, uh, you know, I remember one time being in the office and a guy was talking about how uh, he saw two insects having sex and it was the weirdest thing he ever saw uh, and he said yeah it looked like they were doing it froggy style and we all laughed and and I'm sitting there thinking and, and later on I said I don't think you should have said that because later on somebody can come back and say they were traumatized by the fact that you mentioned sex in a joke in the workplace now understand what you're doing when you support this kind of weird mentality number one what you're doing is you're, you're not, you're disempowering women because you're portraying women as these weak little powder puffs who can't even hear the word penis without going into a freaking frenzy and having a nervous breakdown. Like, like that's really what you're doing. And, and the Condoleezza Rice made that point. And I agree with her hundred percent. She said, she said, look, serious stuff is serious stuff, but non-serious stuff needs to stay in the zone of non-serious stuff. You deal with it. You say, Hey, don't, don't make jokes like that around me. I don't want to hear that stuff, but you don't sort of say, Oh my God, I, I'm, I, I just, I'm so fragile. I'm so broken down. I can't, I can't, I couldn't go to work for three months because I heard the word penis on the job. Oh, I do declare. Oh my goodness. Right. It goes back to that Miss Scarlet gone with the wind bullshit. Right. The second thing that you do when you allow people to take something as simple as a, a sexual joke and you make it into something as serious as a sexual assault allegation is you're kind of like doing something that I don't think is very natural as a human being. Understand this. Sex is very important and is very real in our world. Everybody has sex at some point. If you don't, something is wrong with you because sex is the reason that you exist. If people were not having sex, then there would be no people in this world. The population of the world would not be 7,347,256,804. The population of the world would be zero. If there were no sex, we would not exist. So sex is about as fundamental to who we are as people as anything that there is. So it doesn't mean that it doesn't, it, it, that you should get raunchy with it or ridiculous with it. But I think that we should ask ourselves, how stupid do we look when we act like the mere mention of sex in the workplace is somehow some violation of, 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 you know, some horrible violation that cannot be tolerated under any circumstances. People think about sex all the time. It's going to slip out. Uh, yeah, I think that, so, so anyway, let me, let me keep going up. So, okay, in case you just came in, I'm talking about Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, he's been accused of sexual misconduct uh, in more than one occasion. And I'm actually going through the allegations with you guys so we can kind of talk about them one by one so you guys can kind of know uh, what it is. Um, Neil was doing extremely well. Uh, by the way, YouTube, please hit that, that thumbs up button if you're on YouTube. Take a second to do that. Also, if you want to get a text message when I go live, text the word voice to 31996. Uh, text my name, Boyce, B-O-Y-C-E, to 31996. So type in my name and then text it to that number and you'll be on the list and I can let you know when I go live. Uh, also, don't forget, I'll be in Houston December 8th. So if you live in Houston and you want to come out, go to drboycehouston.com. That's drboycehouston.com. Okay, so Neil deGrasse Tyson is doing really well. He's making millions of dollars. He's, he's kind of um, doing, you know, he's, he's, he's doing extremely well uh, in this space, in, in the academic space and in the, um, uh, in the public arena. You know, I, I, I think he's, he's, he's great on TV. He does a good job. Uh, but then, you know, there are these accusations that, that have come up uh, from various women 
that Neil apparently behind closed doors, you know, he might be a little bit of a horn dog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through an article here at Deadline.com. And uh, Deadline.com is a um, an entertainment-based publication, right? So Neil is not just a scientist. He's also a little bit of a... Um, celebrity right he's you know he's he's probably hung out with all kinds of famous people from you know i don't know from the pope to uh to brad pitt to two chains the rapper to you know whatever right so he's in that celebrity space and and it, and it comes with the territory you know i mean when you get out there and you're very public uh people are going to take parts of your life and make it public so if that's the area arena you're trying to go into just be ready for that so uh basically they said that uh degrassi tyson has come under under scrutiny as two more women, two more, so there's already one apparently, um, at least one, um, accused the Cosmos host of sexual misconduct. In light of the new allegations, the networks and producers behind the, the Emmy-winning Cosmos re reboot are now vowing to look into the matter. Quote, the credo at the heart of Cosmos is to follow the evidence wherever it leads. So that's when they go blah, 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 and they say they're committed to a thorough investigation, yada, yada, yada. Now let's keep going. Uh, they said, following the acclaim of the 2014 revival of the classic Carl Sagan docuseries, Fox and National Geographic, those are the two companies that sponsor the show, ordered a second installment uh, with Tyson to return as a host. Uh, they said, we've only become aware, recently aware of the allegations, uh, and uh, we've taken these matters seriously, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, the action follows a report by David McAfee in which Dr. Caitlin N. Allers, an associate professor of physics and astronomy at Bucknell University, Claimed that Tyson groped her at an after party following a meeting of the American Astronomical Society in 2009, while Tyson's former assistant, Ashley Watson, said she was forced to quit her job over inappropriate sexual advances. Uh, the two women joined musician uh, Tichia Ahmed, who a year ago accused Tyson of raping her while both were graduate students. In a recent interview, she revealed additional details about the alleged incident. Wow. Okay, so um, Neil could be, he could be screwed. He could be, he could be, he could be screwed. Um, let's let's, let's kind of go step by step here and kind of analyze this in a little more detail. Now, if you're on Facebook, I'm gonna show you a picture. If you're not on Facebook, just go to, uh, if you're on uh, Instagram uh, and you wanna see the images, go to drboystv.com. That's drboystv.com and you can actually see the YouTube conversation. Um, here, here's uh, the, the professor at Bucknell, uh, Dr. Caitlin Allers, um, and uh, you know uh, you you can see um, you know who she is and 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 all that other stuff. And then uh, let me see if I can find uh, his wife because I think that Neil deGrasse Tyson is married, which means uh, yeah, his wife is probably mad at him too. Uh, here's his wife. Here's his wife. Let me see here. There we go. Okay. So Neil, um, you know, he has an affinity for Becky. Um, and, uh, and that is what it is. It's his choice. It's his, his, his life. Um, and, and I think that, uh, you know what this reminds me of? I, I had a, there was a classmate I had who, um, who, who was white and she, um, I think she liked me. I don't know. I, do, I don't know. I don't usually pick up on stuff like that. And I remember that when she became a professor at the university that she teaches at, she called me years later. And I remember she said something to me like, she said, um, I, I think she was passing a hint. She said, uh, I think Neil deGrasse Tyson is so sexy. She said, I would fuck him in a minute. Right. And, and so I think that I really look back on that. And I think that she, that was her way of saying like, Hey, I get down with the brothers. I get down with the black men, and I and I just acted like I didn't hear it. I just I just kind of laughed and giggled and was like, "Oh, that's funny, ha <laughs> ha," you know. But but it was you know I'm like, uh, -uh you you know, no, thank you. And and I think that the thing about it is that a, a Degrassi Tyson, what he needs to understand is that when you're a black man and you're dating a white woman, you know, the problem with that scenario for you is that. If you're if she ever accuses you of anything, you're gonna lose before the battle begins, right? If she ever accuses you of anything, you're done. Like, like the accusation will leave you done. You know, like um, what's his name? The brother at uh <clears throat> at Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin, the football player, Quintez Cephas. Go look that case up. The case of Quintez Cephas. Two white girls invited him for a threesome, and they they wanted to get high with him. They wanted they wanted to get drunk with him. They wanted to 
uh, do nasty things with him in the bedroom as a team. They invited him for this. And, and one of them even sent out a text message, you know, while she was doing it, like a text message saying basically like they, their friends, like, what are you up to? And she said, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting it in. I'm trying not to be too graphic because I'm trying to, trying to be a little more, um, less, uh, le I, I'm trying to keep, quit, quit getting banned from everything. I get banned from Facebook and all that all the time. I'm always in Facebook jail. So anyway, um, you know, it's so the next day, you know, the, the, the two women, accused him of rape. Uh, it was like two days later, I think. And, uh, and it was fascinating to me because there was no evidence at all that this was actually what occurred. And there's video surveillance of him interacting with them in a very friendly way after the incident took place. She texted him smiley faces and hearts like after the incident allegedly took place. So, uh, you know, only in America can a white female uh, literally feed you that much bullshit and expect you to think that the bullshit is actually celery and fried chicken. Like, like they will feed you bullshit and make you think it's a gourmet meal and they expect you to eat it like it's a gourmet meal. Like I'm sitting here thinking, what's going on? This is insanity. And so the only way to make sense out of this, out of all of this, is to look at the history of America and to know about the fact that for hundreds of years, it didn't matter what the white female was accusing the black male of. The black male would go down uh, before the investigation even took place. Uh, the brother that plays for the Dallas Cowboys, the running back, uh, I can't remember his name. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, he's very good running. Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott has a similar situation where uh, his, his, the girl he was messing with, uh, she basically said to him, uh, I'm a white girl. Uh, I can take you down in a minute. I can ruin your career in a minute. Right. So she knew her power. She knows that her words uh, have a power that his words will never have. So I think that with Neil, if I were his friend, I'd probably say, you know, OK, man, you know, I, I can dig what you're doing. But I, I think that you probably want to be cautious, because if this goes bad, it's really going to go bad. If this goes bad for you, it could ruin everything. All the hard work that you put in over the years. is going to disappear if you make decisions that uh, are not uh, safe for you. That, in, in fact, I even, I even argue with a lot of parents, like one of the reasons that we're big on training young black children to be entrepreneurs is because I believe that if you have a black male son, you should keep him out of the corporate workplace. You should keep him away from the corporate plantation. Uh, don't have him build his career at a corporation in a white supremacist institution, because then you're building, uh, you're building a statue uh, that, that's, that, that's made out of paper mache. You know, you're building a house of dominoes that can be flicked over just like that by somebody deciding that they want to get revenge on your son. So I encourage you to teach your sons to have their own businesses so they can get away from all of that. So anyway, so, 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 okay, so let's go through the allegations against Degrassi Tyson. Um, I'm going to tell you, the, the first allegation just doesn't, you know, I mean, this, okay, now, now pay attention. Professor or Dr. Caitlin Allers, an associate professor of physics at Bucknell University, claimed that Tyson groped her at an after party in 2009. What does that mean? How do you prove that shit? And why, why are you talking about this damn near 10 years later? So, okay, so somebody grabbed your ass at a party in 2009. I'm not going to say that that's not, that that's appropriate. It's not appropriate. But I'm also not going to say that that's traumatic, so traumatic that 10 years later, you're acting like somehow you get to get put in the category of sexual assault victims, you know, and, and, and you can't prove that, you know, so you, you're there, you, you're there with him. Maybe, maybe he's drunk. You're drunk. Everybody's drunk. I'm sure that if you grab his ass in 2009, he's not going to come back and try to destroy you by accusing you of ass grabbing back, you know, back 10 years ago at the beginning of the Obama presidency. My God, get the get off the page. You don't, you're, what, what this lady's saying doesn't even deserve to be thrown into the conversation. It's, it's, I just, I'm sorry. Call me whatever you want. Because here's the thing, here's another thing that they do. Uh, a lot of things, the, one thing the feminists do is they, they love to claim the victim role so they can become the perpetrator. They claim the victim role so they can attack you. They claim the victim role so they can dominate you and make you into a victim. So they'll come back and say, Oh, you're a sexist. You know, you're anti-woman. No, I am pro-black man too. 
which means I'm very pro-woman and I'm very pro-black man, which means I'm going to be pro-truth. And being pro-truth means that this is bullshit. You can't come back. You know, if you're, again, if you're going to get upset about him grabbing your ass in 2009, then that shit should have got handled back in 2009. You should have went to the police in 2009. You should have made filed a report in 2009. You should have went public back in 2009. You can't come back in 2018. I don't know what the statute of ass grabbing limitations is. I don't know what the statute of limitations is on grabbing somebody's titty or whatever it is that she's saying that he did. But at the, but at the end of the day, you're coming back damn near 10 years later and acting like we should pretend like it happened yesterday. You know, no, no. And what's fascinating to me is they will literally talk about an ass grabbing incident 10 years ago where there's no evidence and, and make it almost comparable to a black man being shot by the police last week on camera. Like they literally in their mind, pay attention. Think about this. They will give more attention in this country to a woman who claimed, claimed her ass was grabbed 10 years ago when there's no proof than they give to a, a video of a black man being shot by the cops an hour ago. <laughs> That's what you call white privilege in America. That's white privilege. Okay. So I'm sitting there trying to say, look, I'm not saying the man should have grabbed your ass. Um, I'm trying to say that if you were my sister, and you came back to me 10 years later saying he grabbed my ass at an after party, I would say, wow, okay, damn, that sucks. What did you do? Like, did you, did you, did you smack him? Did you call the popos? Like, you know, you should have called the police. If you, if you were really traumatized, you should have called the cops. Uh, did you, did you file a report? Did you, did you, did you leave? Did you walk, did you leave the situation? You know, because, you know, you know, again, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, maybe deep down, maybe underneath all of that, your know, teddy bear persona, maybe he's like just a Suge Knight motherfucker. Like, he's like, bitch, you tell somebody I grab your ass, I'm going to fuck you up. Like, maybe that's the real Neil deGrasse Tyson. Maybe that's the real deGrasse Tyson, right? You got Neil deGrasse Tyson and real deGrasse Tyson. So maybe real deGrasse Tyson is a completely different person who shows up and will beat your ass if you even act like you're going to tell the police that he was grabbing your booty. Right? Maybe that's it. But I'm willing to get bet you that Neil deGrasse Tyson is the kind of guy who's like, if you tell him, look, don't grab my ass, don't touch me no more, uh, or, 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 or it's going to really go down, I'm willing to bet you that he's going to hear that. You know, again, I don't know, but then again, man, I'm speculating. You know, he, you know he's, he's a smart man in public, but he may be completely stupid in private. I don't know. But I'm going to imagine that a man who's got millions of dollars on the line, who's got a, this career where he's known all throughout the globe, who's won all kinds of prizes. I don't know if he's won the Nobel Prize or close to it. I don't think he won the Nobel, but he's up there. I'm, gonna, I'm imagining that he's probably going to back off if you tell him to back off, right? And, and and so I, I so so that anyway so let's let's move on okay so that's the first allegation you have the one lady who's a professor who says he grabbed my he groped me in 2009 and and now I'm I'm gonna you know come back 10 years later and talk about the thing that I didn't tell anybody back then okay all right. okay sure all right so then you got the second one right second accusation um, I'm looking at this here this is another person who says and this is what it this is where it ends up looking very bad, right? When you've got multiple accusations. But what people don't understand is that there are scenarios where multiple, you know, multiple accusations can sometimes be multiple pieces of bullshit all tacked onto each other to make it appear like you've got real shit. You know, like, but, but really at the end of the day, if I take zero plus zero plus zero times zero to the zero power, uh, uh, you know, multiply by zero again, I'm still going to have something that looks like zero. I, actually, mathematically, it's not defined. You, you actually can't multiply zero times zero, but, but that's beside the point. You get what I'm saying. Zero plus zero is still zero. So if I say, look, I've got 47 zeros, um, and, but that's supposed to equal 10, that's not true. No, you look at each zero individually, say, okay, zero plus zero plus zero plus zero equals zero. So in this case, um, I would almost say that there's zero in terms of the, the accusation. I'm, not, I'm just not going to be somebody that's going to be overly sympathetic to the fact that you are claiming with no proof. Let's not forget that point. No proof that, that you know, you're claiming that this man's career should be destroyed because he allegedly groped you in 2009. I don't even know what that Grow, I don't know, grow, what, like, what does that, did he, what did he grab? Did he put his arms around your waist? Um, what does that mean? And also the other thing that's very interesting, this is, this is where a lot of men get confused. This is why I think ladies have an expectation to be clear with men. You got to communicate a little bit more because a lot of sexual cues 
are nonverbal. You know, a lot of say, and you think about this, raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. There are lots of people who've had sex where it, there's never a point where the person says, I am giving you permission to grope me now. Uh, or, or you say, hey, is it okay if I give you a kiss? Or is it okay if, if I take your clothes off? Uh, you know, th does that really happen in the real world? No, it doesn't. Most of the sexual cues tend to be nonverbal. And that's the part, because think about this. Let's say you're a guy who really wants to do the right thing and you don't want to offend anybody and you want to be politically correct. And you're stepping into each step. You're like, is it okay if I ask you out for a date? Because I don't want you to misinterpret these as, as unwanted sexual advances, but I would very much like to date you, but I don't want to ask you until you give me permission to ask you. So I'm asking you if it's okay if I ask you. Because if I ask you without asking you to ask you, then you can come back later and say, oh my God, he made unwanted sexual advances toward me uh, because he asked me out and we work together, right? Like that's a crime. It's not a crime for a man to ask a woman on a date that he works with. You spend more time at your job than you spend anywhere else. You spend more time at your job than you spend with your children. You spend more time at your job than you spend doing anything. So, so relationships in the workplace are very natural. People spend hours and hours together, they, they, they get close. And, and so what's happened is with the Me Too movement is what they're saying is, here's, this, is this is why it's a power move on the part of white feminists. They're saying, we have the right to make any advance that we want without consequences. We have the right to decide how everything's gonna go. And if it, if it doesn't make us, if it makes us uncomfortable in the least, if you decide that you have the right to do what I could easily do to you, like I can hit on you, but, but if you hit on me, I can say I was traumatized and come back and destroy you 20 years later, right? Pay, pay attention now, pay attention. Pay attention. How often, how many Me Too accusations, how many Me Too scandals have involved men accusing women of hitting on them in the workplace and having the woman literally destroyed in front of our eyes? Has some guy come along and said, you know, Oprah uh, told me she liked me and told me I was a sexy man in 1992. And I think Oprah needs to be destroyed. I think Oprah's career needs to be ruined because she's clearly a predator because she told me I look good. Right. Like you don't see that, right? So the power move is the white feminists are saying, we want to write the whole narrative. We can hit on you, but you can't hit on us. Um, we can decide we want to fuck you, but you can't decide you want to fuck us. Uh, I can do, you know, they, they feel that they can sort of decide, like, it, it, look, if things don't go right, if you don't behave, if you don't give us what we want, like if I get with you and it doesn't work out and we stop having sex, I can go back and rewrite the whole narrative Instead of it being what it was, which might have been, you know, the woman saw the man, found him to be attractive. Again, women are empowered. Women have the ability to uh, be attracted to men, just like men can be attracted to women. Women have the ability to hit on a man the same way a man can hit on a woman. If you believe in women's empowerment, you agree with everything that I'm saying right now. So, so, so rather than the, the, the real narrative being reported, which might have been the woman saw the man, she thought he was sexy, she, she threw some hints, she decided she wanted to get it in, she went on some dates, then they started having sex and everything was great instead later on and this is why the men have to be careful later on when she's upset maybe she finds you with another girl maybe you don't date her as long as she wants or, or the relationship just ends she can go back and rewrite that whole story as he pressured me into um unwanted sexual activity um he um he commented that i look good in my blouse and um and, uh, and it traumatized me. Um, he sent me uh, vulgar text messages with sexual advances in the, in the text messages. Now, you might have been fine with all of that when y'all were fucking, but now that you're not together anymore, suddenly he, you can portray him as a predator. This, is, this happens all the time. How often do you hear? You hear it all the time. Like, like, like again, my, my belief at the end of the day is that if you agree to do something, that means you are empowered to agree to do whatever it is you agree to do. You, you, that if you said to if somebody says, hey, I'm not going to force you into, into sleeping with me. Uh, I just want you to know that I think you're attractive and I'd like to invite you to my place. Uh, right. Like Patty would say, like, I would like to know if you'd like to come back to my place with me tonight. Um, you have the right to say no if you want to. And if you say yes, you can't come back and say, well, I only said yes because I was intimidated. I only said yes because the person had power or whatever. Because the reason that that, that, that can't really fly is because 
women are attracted to powerful men and powerful men get hit on all the time in the workplace. Powerful men get hit on all the time in the workplace. And so when you just believe every accusation without investigating thoroughly, what you're doing is you're setting up these crazy traps where a woman who's really vindictive, who wants to rise to the top of the ladder, all she's got to do is seduce a man into sex and then blackmail him. You're encouraging blackmail against mostly black males. And the black males are the ones who are going to get blackmailed, right? You're encouraging them to say to seduce the man, get him to sleep with her. And then later on, she can come back and say, you know, if I report this, you're going to be in trouble. I won't be in trouble, but you'll be in trouble. Right. And, 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 and that part I don't understand. It, it doesn't add up. It doesn't make any sense. So anyway, um, by the way, do me a favor. You're on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the share button. Subscribe button. All that stuff. Make sure you sign up at drvoicetv.com. That's where we where I go live. I try to go live at 2 p.m. Eastern every day. Sometimes I go live a little earlier, a little later. If you want to know when I go live, text the word voice to 31996. Type in voice and then type send that to 31996 and you'll be on the list. I'm going to look at some of your comments real quick. And I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to make a couple of you moderators. I think we need a couple of mods in here. Let me see here. Uh, let's see. Anger and rage says, "Let's just admit it. This Me Too bullshit is getting out of control." Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, uh, ha okay, so y'all talking about Halle Berry being mixed race? Okay. All right. um, Summer says, "Sounds like his wife." wants to take his money back to her community and using these women to hurt. <laughs> okay, I that's a hell of a conspiracy theory. Um, the Me Too movement is witchcraft. Okay. I think the Me Too movement started with good intentions, but it's, 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 it's clearly undermined itself um, by allowing anybody that the, dag, the, the dog drags in to make any accusation against anyone and people are expected to automatically believe it. That's why I think the Me Too movement hasn't gone well. Now, um, now, and, and the thing is that Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's, he's in a vulnerable position because he's a black male that operates in a heavy Me Too space. When you're around a lot of white liberals, you're, you're surrounded by uh, a lot of uh, interesting types of oppression, uh, censorship. Um, everything must be politically correct or they're going to label you. Uh, you know, you'll be a sexist, you'll be a, rape, a racist, you'll be a uh, whatever, you'll be a homophobe, right? They love to label people and they use those labels to censor free speech. That's why on most college campuses, uh, when you hear about a speaker being uninvited or not allowed to speak because everyone is outraged that they're coming to campus, it's usually liberal students telling, say, a conservative that they can't talk, whereas you rarely hear about a conservative students telling a liberal they can't talk. So I'm not, a, I'm not really in that conservative or liberal space, but I can tell you that that's a problem. That's a problem when you have people that literally tell you that if you don't agree with what I say, then something's wrong with you. I'm going to mislabel you and I'm going to attack you and try to destroy you. And I think that that's, um, that, that's, a, that's a serious problem. And it's not going to work. I think long term, uh, my prediction with the Me Too movement is that it, people are going to see it for what it is. I think a lot of people are seeing it for bullshit. A lot of people are distancing themselves from it. Uh, I, I know a lot of women who have good common sense who are saying, this, this is not reflective of what I really wanted. I wanted justice, but I did not want injustice, right? More injustice in response to prior injustices, right? Uh, and so personally, um, I, I'm, I'm curious to see how Neil's case works out because again, just because Neil's situation happened under you know, the scope of the Me Too movement, that doesn't mean that you know, all the accusations are bogus. But as I said, the first accusation about, you know, he grabbed my ass in 2009, you can get you, you can uh, you can take every seat with that. Like just take your ass home because that, that that that's not even interesting to me. Um, now here's another one from a, a former assistant named Ashley Watson. She says she was forced to quit her job over his inappropriate sexual advances. So uh, apparently, uh, from what I read, the assistant says that he um, that he uh, I don't have her picture here. I, I was going to show you guys her picture, but um, basically, I think she was saying that he. Uh, according to her, she said he pressured her into uh, going to her apartment for a glass of wine, and that's where he made a sexual advance. Now, um, now, though, to be clear, I don't think any sex happened. Uh, I don't think there was any touching that occurred, but apparently he let her know that he was interested in, uh, in getting with her, uh, which uh, she felt made her so uncomfortable that she quit her job. Now, I don't know what happened in this case. I, I think they should investigate it. Now, the question is, how do you really prove this, right? It's very difficult to prove. And how do you respond to this, you know? But I, I do think this. I, I think that if you, uh, if you really think about this, what I would say to a Degrassi Tyson or anybody is that, you know, we should at least live under the agreement, under the assumption that 
<clears throat> you know, if, if you let a woman know that you're interested and she lets you know she's not interested, then you've got to get rid of that old school notion that you're supposed to just basically wear her down until she finally says yes. Um, what's problematic about that is that there are some women who like that. There are some women who want to, you know, make the chase difficult. Like they want to tell the man no. Well, I'm going to tell you like this, you know, when I figured out how, what the direction the world was going in, when I was a young scholar and, and I knew I had a lot on the line, um, if you told me no one time, I was never going to ask you on a date ever again. I wasn't going to look at you. I wasn't going to flirt with you. I wasn't going to talk to you like I was interested in you because no meant no. I remember hearing a long time ago, no means no. So I took that very literally because I don't want you not going to come back on me years later talking about Dr. Boyce pressured me into, into sleeping with him, whatever. No, no. You tell me no one time, then that means I'm going to assume that you're a real woman, that you're a grown ass woman. And that no really means no. And that you're not playing a game with me. I had that issue. It's funny. I, I, you know, I guess I relate to, to Neil a little bit because I, I did go to grad school and all this stuff. And we had, you know, there's similar experiences that happened. And I remember being in grad school and there was a woman uh, that I was interested in. And uh, of course, I was I was very nervous about talking to her and telling her how I felt. And I and I mentioned I said, hey, you know, uh, I'd like to know what do you think about us, you know, dating a little bit, you know, stuff like that. And she gave me all these reasons why she didn't think it would work and said no and everything else. And I just said, okay, no problem, no problem at all. I was a little embarrassed, but I just said, okay, you know, it's no problem. I thank you for being honest with me. I appreciate it, whatever. And then weeks later, one of her friends calls me and says, well, why don't you date so and so? I'm not gonna say her name because she may be watching this. Um, and I was like, well, because I asked her out and she said that she didn't think it was a good idea for us to date each other. And she said, oh, she said, oh, no, she was she was she likes you. She was just trying to see if you were serious. And I was like. I was serious and I thought she was serious, but it sounds like she's playing games and I can't play those games. You know, I'm a black man. I can't play games like that where. I, I just decide like, oh, well, she said no, but she really meant yes. So I'm going to just force myself on her and eventually she'll break down and start to love me and want me. No, you can't do that because your little experiment may go bad. And next thing you know, you're being labeled a predator. Like there's a very thin line between, you know, the, between the man that the woman finds out later on that she really wants versus the man that she defines as the predator. And I'm going to tell you, the worst thing you could be labeled as a man in this country, especially a black man, is a sexual predator. So I would almost tell young men, and you got to tell this to your sons as well, you know, only date grown ass women, only date mature ass women who will tell you what they really mean. If she likes you, she's going to tell you she likes you. If she ain't, if she says she doesn't like you, then you got to take it for what she says. And at that point, the ball has to be back in her court. Maybe you, you might come back later on and let me know, oh, I was just playing. I really do like you. But... I don't agree with that old school notion of just keep going, keep being persistent, all that, because in this Me Too environment, that is how they label these men as sexual predators. So now with Neil, I think there, there is the mistake of trying to um, have that relationship with the assistant, um, I, you know, but, but at the same time, it's, it's interesting because these, these work uh, attractions occur all the time. If people are working together all the time, uh, it's a, it, raise your hand if you've ever seen it or, or had that experience. You work with somebody all the time, you're forming a connection, you're forming trust, you're inter engaging each other, uh, you know, very deeply on a regular basis. Um, you know, things sort of happen. So again, I don't know what happened with this, um, uh, with, with this particular woman, but I do know that uh, I would almost say to him, uh, you know, if you, if she is working with you, maybe she doesn't need to come back to your place for a glass of wine. Uh, if she is working with you, maybe you should sort of weigh the risks of making a sexual advance with her. Um, or maybe also with her, uh, you would also have to say to her, like, look, you didn't have to really go to his apartment for the wine. You could, you know, somebody could say, well, I, you know, I, I felt like if I didn't go, he was going to fire me. But you could say that you thought that was the case, but you can't prove that. You can't prove, you know, that you know, that if you were told Neil deGrasse Tyson, again, maybe deep down, he's just another Suge Knight who's going to be like, you know, cussing you out and, and whatever and firing you. But you can't, you can't expect us to make the assumption that your assumption that he would fire you for not going to his apartment for a glass of wine is accurate. If a man works with you and he says, hey, let's go out to dinner and you say, sure, because you're afraid that there might be consequences for not going out to dinner with him. At the end of the day, people are going to say, yeah, but you did agree to go to dinner with him. 
you know, you could have reported it to HR. You could have told him like, no, don't do this. If you do this, I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to, uh, you know, deal with it appropriately or whatever. But, but the question becomes, how does a man let a woman know that he's interested without possibly being labeled as a sexual predator. I think that is, is the question that has to be asked if you're serious about kind of dealing with this, you know, dealing with real harassment in the workplace. Because we know that you have crazy things that happen. You have men that come to work and pull the penis out on the, on the table or who won't stop making sexual jokes or keep hitting on women no matter what. Um, you know, that happens. But then you have a lot of men who are genuinely nice guys. You tell him to go away, he's gonna go away. You know, you tell him you're not interested, he's gonna believe you. And 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 what's happening is that some of these men are being labeled inappropriately. And what it does is it undermines the credibility of the whole Me Too movement. Because what it does is it makes people say, Oh, all those Me Too, those white feminist Me Too people, all they do, they just accuse they just find any man that they're not happy with, any man who doesn't do what they say, any man that's not under their control, any man who disappoints them, and they use their white woman power to slam a sledgehammer upside his head. That makes so which makes you the predator at that point. You become the assaulter. So anyway, so I'm looking at this other article about Degrassi Tyson and uh, and let's see. So she says, uh, so okay. So that professor said that, that he felt her up again. I don't know what that means. Um, uh, let's see. The uh, she says that if it were to happen today, she would have reported the incident. Um, uh, the groping incident allegedly occurred uh, at an after party following an AAS meeting. AAS is the American Astronomical Society. Uh, and here's what she says happened. She says, Tyson was there and he was dancing and drinking and all of that at the party. So a friend and I decided to get pictures with him. So she's coming up on him, uh, flirting with him or getting, wanting to be close to him. Um, but after the first picture was taken, Tyson decided to explore Dr. Allen's tattoo. So he's saying that she started, he started looking at her tattoo. Now, if you look here, um, you can see this image. If you, if you can't see the image here on Instagram, go to drboystv.com and you can see the, the image. So this is the image of him. This is her tattoo. Her tattoo's right here on her uh, left arm. And he uh, turns her arm around. And he, he's looking at her tattoo, uh, you know, pretty closely. So, uh, so that, that's pretty intimate. You know, he's, he's kind of touching her a little bit. Um, and maybe, again, maybe he's feeling himself, maybe, you know, he, again, the liquor's flowing. I, I think if you eliminate the liquor, especially from college campuses, if you minimize the amount of drinking that occurs on college campuses, you would fix a whole lot of problems, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, let's see. So she says, uh, Tyson decided to explore her tattoo. It features a realistic solar system that stretches from her arm to her back and collarbone area. She says, after we had taken the picture, he noticed my tattoo and kind of grabbed me to look at it. And it was really obsessed about whether I had Pluto on this tattoo or not. And then he looked for Pluto and followed the tattoo into my dress. Okay. Um, all right. So let me see here. So let, let me let me pull the image up again so we can kind of look at this. Um, okay. So she she followed he followed Pluto into her dress. Now Pluto. Now in case you don't know, Dr. Tyson is uh, connected with Pluto because he's one of the people that actually. Uh, helped to confirm that Pluto was not a planet. So Pluto was declassified as a planet, um, partly because of his work. So uh, he followed Pluto up into her dress. So you see here, it looks like the tattoo goes up into her shoulder. And uh, and he kind of, you know, I guess her dress is over her shoulder. So he, it looks like maybe he reached, li maybe lifted up uh, the dress a little bit to see if Pluto was on her shoulder. I, 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 I think obviously that's over the line. Um, the question becomes this, like, so, so it was her interpretation of his behavior, uh, exactly accurate. So one thing that she says is, um, uh, she says that, uh, that her experience was public. So he did this in front of other people. It wasn't like this happened behind closed doors. Uh, and she said it didn't rise to the level of assault, but it did show that Tyson was capable of some creepy behavior. Um, creepy. I don't know if that's creepy. I, I don't know if I call it creepy. I, I mean, and again, remember that, you know, there's a thin line between, you know, being creepy and flirtatious. Uh, you know, it's flirtatious if she likes you. It's creepy if she doesn't. Right. Uh, so I don't really know. I, I can't say. I mean, you know, I can I'm trying to visualize. Imagine a, a, a woman is talking, you know, sisters. Imagine you talking to Idris Elba and he sees this great tattoo going up your shoulder uh, or your shoulder blade. And he kind of just he, he's letting you know he likes you and he kind of lifts up the, 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 
you know, the, the, the end of the dress a little bit on the shoulder to look at your, you know, tattoo the entire time. How would you feel? Right. Um, you know, now, obviously, I think that is a little bit more than what's necessary. I'm not a believer you should be touching people without their permission. But at the same time, I can know a lot of women who might say, oh, I kind of like that. Right. Uh, but then again, though, at the same time, though, guys have to be careful because if she's married or in a relationship, you ain't got no business touching this lady's shoulder. So I can I can agree that if Neil did this in the way she described, he shouldn't have done any of that. Now, the question becomes, do you have the right to come back and try to ruin his whole career 10 years later um, because of it? I, I think the answer is no. So anyway, um, uh, let's see here. So uh, let's see. So, uh, so she says that she did tell somebody about his behavior in 2013. And I find that really interesting that she's still holding on to that. Um, I, I don't know if it's necessary it's four years later and you're still holding on to that. Why, like what exactly is traumatic about that? Like, like why can't you just say, stop it, you know, or, or move your shoulder again, you know, I don't know. It, it just doesn't make any sense. So anyway, let me, let me go into some of the other, a couple of the other accusations because there, there's more here. Um, so he's not, you know, totally off the hook with a lot of this stuff. Um, there is another, oh, there, well, there was the secretary, right? I mentioned her who said that he invited her to his room for wine and, uh, and then made a sexual advance, which led her to quit her job. Um, and I mentioned that, I told you, I don't think that that was smart for him to do. But again, it's the question is, how do you prove that? Now, the, the more serious accusation occurred um, um, many years ago, 20, about 28 years ago, which right there, that kind of, I mean, Come on, you know, but basically there's a, a woman and now she's a sister. I'm gonna show you a picture. Her name is Tachia Ahmed. And she says that Tyson raped her in his apartment when they were grad students together. And she says, I think that he is someone that could use his position of fame and power in a way to try to take advantage. Okay, that's what Dr. Allers said. Okay, so let me show you um, uh, Tachia. Now Tachia is apparently she's the lone black woman in, in all of this. Um, here she is. You can see her on drboystv.com if you're not here. So this is this is this is who she is, and um, and basically uh, she was accusing him of sexual assault when they were graduate students. Now, rape is a very serious crime, um, and because it's serious, that means that you must be very equally serious when proving whether or not the rape actually occurred. Um, you know, because rape is so serious, that's why you can't send someone to prison for rape or, or even make that accusation without making sure that you have some evidence that it happened, right? So, um, so she accused him of rape when they were graduate students. Now, now Neil deGrasse Tyson's 59 years old. Um, he hasn't been in grad school for a long time. Neil deGrasse Tyson finished his PhD. He finished graduate school in 1991, right? So Neil deGrasse Tyson finished graduate school back when the Cosby show was the hottest show on television, right? He finished graduate school, what, 27 years ago. So you're kind of, so, so again, with, with all due uh, respect and empathy for what may or may not have occurred back then, we must also remember that this literally happened almost 30 years ago, three decades ago. Um, and, and, and again, I don't know if there's any proof. And so, what happens though is that people see uh people give the credibility to the accusation because they say well yeah 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 but it's not just one person there's several there's several accusations several people but again as i told you the, the first accusation i thought was bs you know 2009 no evidence it, he allegedly touched your arm and and made you you know feel uncomfortable that that's not much you can't you can't do much with that so i think that we must be cautious about making these leaps of logic like because neil grabbed a woman's arm in 2009, and because he uh, let his secretary know that he'd like to sleep with her, that that somehow means that he must have raped this woman in 1988, 89, 90, whatever year that she says it occurred. Do you follow me? Do you follow me? You know, it's, it, 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 you know, it, it's almost like those court cases where they say, uh, this, this man killed his wife and we know it because 
uh, he beat up his wife, right? Which we know that beating a woman is a terrible thing, right? We know he did that. That's and he cheated on her, beat her, and that means he must have killed her. We know that those are terrible acts. Cheating's bad. Don't do it. Beating is is worse. Don't do that. Um, and, but but be, cheating and beating does not equal killing, right? So you can't go to court and make the lot the argument that because he cheated on her and because he beat her, he must have also murdered her because. Uh, you know, a vast majority of men who kill their wives, they do beat them. But the vast majority of men who beat their wives don't ever kill anybody, right? So the same thing is kind of true here. They're sort of saying that, okay, because he grabbed this woman's arm in 2009, and because he uh, he told his secretary he wanted to sleep with her, he didn't rape her, he said, I want to sleep with you, uh, he must have raped this woman back in the 1980s. That's kind of that that weird Me Too logic where they sort of stack on all these accusations to give credibility to something that can't be proven. And what, they, what they're kind of doing, unfortunately, is they're shifting the responsibility and the blame and the accountability onto other people. Instead of them being held accountable, um, instead of them being held accountable for the fact that you didn't report it when you should have reported it, right? That's the real deal. That's the, the key point. You know, if, if, if it's real, again, because rape is a serious accusation, you must be heard, but also because it's serious, you must report it so that it can be dealt with right then and make sure that you, that that the accuser and the victim are who we think they are. We we, we know who the victim is. We know who the perpetrator is. Because sometimes the, the, the person we think is a victim is actually the perpetrator. There, there are numerous cases out here of false accusations being laid out by people who just were crazy, disgruntled, or whatever. That it happens all the time. So my point on that is to say that, you know, again, I, I, I'm just trying to figure out, I think one of my first questions for her would be, okay, back in 1989, 1990, 1991, when this happened, what did you do? You know, uh, who did you call your best friend and say, I'm traumatized because this horrible thing just happened. I just got raped by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Did you, um, you know, did some, did you, did, did you need to go to therapy, you know, for, for 10 years because uh, you, you were a sexual assault victim? Um, even those things provide a little bit of evidence. And, and, and if you go back to say the Bill Cosby situation, which this is not justifying Bill Cosby on any level, because I don't really like this man, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it was fascinating to me how you had women that were saying, Bill raped me 10 times back in the 1970s, and we remained friends for 20 years, and I told, I bragged to my friends that I knew him, I took money from him, I would go visit him whenever I could, and whenever he came into town, he gave me front row tickets to his concert. That says to me that, you know, maybe this happened, maybe it didn't, but either way, it's it, there must be some form of disgruntlement that is leading you to somehow come back and either tell a story that you weren't willing to tell the first time, for whatever reason, or, uh, or, or, or convincing you to rewrite the narrative, right? To rewrite the narrative as, okay, this motherfucker is not giving me money anymore, so I'm going to go and destroy him. I'm either going to use things that, that really did happen against him, or I'm going to use things that, that did not happen against him. But either way, people have a right to say, why didn't you say something 30 years ago, and you can't sort of throw your throw rocks and hide your hands and kind of say, oh, I'm just a fragile little white woman. You don't have a right to ask me why I didn't do the logical thing when when it happened. Like, you don't have the right to, to, to ask me why I didn't report. Yeah, we actually do, because you're trying to send a black man to prison for 30 years to get raped over and over again. You're sending him away to be raped. Again, you, you talk about the fact that you care about sexual assault, but you don't really care about it because mo mo the large percentage of the rapes that happen in this country happen in prison. The fact that you don't talk about prison rape, but you talk about rape all day, but ain't got a damn thing to say about prison rape tells me that you're full of shit. That tells me that you don't care. That tells me that you want some white woman agenda. That tells me that you don't have a, 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 an iota of concern for uh, what happens to people when they've been hit by false accusations, which is worse than being raped. Being falsely accused and sent to prison is worse than being raped one time. I'm sorry, it's true. Because you get falsely accused, you get sent to prison with some big buck, horny motherfuckers who, who are literally willing to fuck anything that moves. That's far worse than, uh, you know, than somebody grabbing your titty, you know, on a Friday night or whatever it is that, that, that you're saying somebody did to you. It doesn't mean that, 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 that it's not bad. It just means that it's not the same thing and that you must understand the importance of ensuring that justice is accurately being served. And we don't do that. We do not do that. So 
Um, I'm going to say this. I, I think that with Degrassi Tyson, my prediction is that um, he's going to go down. I, I, I don't see how he's going to survive this. I, I really kind of think that what's going to happen is they're going to look at him and they're going to say, you know, gosh, we're so disappointed. You know, we thought Neil was one of the good ones. We thought that he was one of the safe Negroes. And now we know he's just a predator like every other black man, uh, you know, in the world. Like, that's how they see the black male. They see the black male as a sexual predator. Um, I think that he's going to lose his show because corporate America doesn't like to take chances on anybody that's been accused of anything. That's why your sons should probably stay out of corporate America, teach them how to start a business so they can have their, so they can have their own institution, not be a part of somebody else's institution. Um, you know, so because corporate America, corporate America doesn't take chances, you know, so even if it's not true, the, the accusation is enough to destroy you. Um, so I, 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 you know, I think the only thing that might give him a shot is that maybe there are people that, that are there who are fair minded enough that they might actually thoroughly investigate and really give him the same uh, second chances that anybody else gets. Or, or maybe we're adjusting like we become numb to the Me Too movement to the point where, you know, Maybe there's an executive with uh, with the TV network who says, yeah, you know, yeah, we know that people think this thing about him, but he's damn good at what he does. So we'll, we're willing to allow a few protests so we can have a great show and make more money. Right. Uh, like, for example, the whole thing with Charlemagne the God, you know, remember Charlemagne the God's accusations, they never went away. They just left the media. So Charlemagne's, you know, still on the Breakfast Club. And, and apparently it's because somebody in the Breakfast Club decided you know, yeah, he's got these accusations, but, you know, we're, we're, we're the good outweighs the bad. Maybe that's what they're thinking. And uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. I'm just giving you analysis as it comes to it, as it comes to me. This is my stream of consciousness on this, it, you know. Um, and, and now, as far as the Me Too movement, um, I make the prediction that the Me Too movement is going to kind of dwindle away uh, because they, they've killed their credibility. What they've done is um, – is they have um, abused their power. They've abused their power by, you know, letting anybody, you know, any Tom, Dick, and Harry, any crazy person, any asshole, any lunatic, any drug addict to come back and make an accusation. And they're, we're all expected to believe it without questioning it because, my God, no one, no one questions the white woman. Um, and, uh, and I think that people are going to be hip to that. I think eventually people are going to be like, this is stupid, like, whatever, you know. And, uh, and I think also – from a political standpoint, the Democratic Party is going to struggle and suffer because when you're empowering um, disgruntled women to destroy any man that makes them upset, you're scaring the shit out of men. You're making men afraid to support you. So, you know, as a man, a lot of men, you know, are like, no, I'm not going to support that because I can't, you know, I can't support a situation where my due process is being denied. Like that case of Quintez Cephas out at the University of Wisconsin, the football player, the university, because of Title IX, you know, that rule they made for white women to so that white women could make can have their sports funded by all the big black men that play football and basketball. They're bringing in billions of dollars every year to the NCAA and that money goes to support white women's sports. Well, another part of Title IX is that uh, is this whole issue about sexual harassment, how the universities have to handle it, you know, stuff like that. And the Obama administration put these really strict, ridiculous rules. Uh, that denied due process to those who've been accused. So Obama, again, your buddy, fucked black men over because he didn't have any concern for the protection of the rights of the accused. He just wanted to make sure these white women felt safe and comfortable and happy and could accuse anybody of anything and not be questioned, right? And so what that led to were situations like the University of Virginia, where um, this white woman made up a whole damn elaborate story. She made up this whole fucking big story about being raped, gang raped at a, at a frat party. Do you know that they were so scared to, to, to touch the fragile white woman to, that they didn't ask her any questions to verify that her story was true? They published this in Rolling Stone magazine, which is read by millions of people. The university, again, without questioning the poor little fragile white woman who uh, was making the accusation, because you don't want to blame the victim, right? They, they went and they, they banned the, the, the fraternity from campus. They fired the university president. You know, all these people were filing lawsuits. And then, my God, there was some sexist police officer who said, hmm, maybe we should just go at least investigate 
just to make sure it's true, just to make sure, just to make sure, just to cover our bases, you know, just to make sure we kind of, you know, cover, cover everything here, you know, because we know it's true, but we need to go make sure it's true. Do you know that when they went and investigated, they found out that there wasn't even a party at the time that the woman said that she was raped at a party. The frat was like, we haven't had a party for months. I don't know what she's talking about. Like, there was no, there was nothing she could name in terms of who was involved, like, like nothing. And her whole situ, the whole case fell apart. There was, there was no support, no evidence. And they eventually confirmed that it did not happen, that she was, oh my God, that mentally ill and just making shit up. And because they were so afraid to do a thorough investigation, they ruined all these people's lives and put them through stuff that they can't ever get back, you know, or took away things they can never get back. You can't, you can't get out from under the shadow of a sexual assault accusation. It's very difficult, right? And so um, Quintez Cephas at University of Wisconsin, his case is interesting because the Title IX thing, where they protect the women and, and at, the, at the expense of the black males, um, Title IX requires them to force him, force the student to uh, basically abandon all of his Miranda rights. They, they basically got, got killed all his Fifth Amendment rights and all that shit and were like, if you don't, um, if you don't cooperate with this investigation right now, we don't care what the police department said. We don't care what your lawyer said. We don't care what's happening in the court of law. If you don't cooperate with our investigation right now, we will kick you off the football team and kick you off this campus. He's already off the football team. They, they were going to put him out of school. So they basically told him that if he did not waive his right to due process, he would be booted off campus. If that ain't some old Nazi fascist shit, I don't know what is. Hitler ain't got nothing on the white feminazi. Hitler ain't got nothing on the white feminazi. When it comes to what they're doing to, to black men especially, it's, it, it, it's, it's an unbelievable kind of situation unless you know the history of America. If you know the history of America, it makes perfect sense. If you want to understand Me Too, all you got to go do is look at Emmett Till. If you want to understand Me Too, all you got to do is go back to Margaret Sanger and the extermination of black babies. If you want to understand Me Too, all you got to do is go back to Black Wall Street when uh, the entire community got burned down and people, hundreds of people were killed uh, because a white woman accused a black man of touching her on an elevator, right? If you want to understand Me Too, all you got to do is go back to slavery. If, if Miss Bessie said that the black man whistled at her and all, her white, all the white men show up and cut his balls off, right? You want to understand Me Too? All you got to do is look at all the black men that are getting out of prison now 25 years later after being falsely accused of sexual assault where there wasn't even a thorough investigation. If you want to understand Me Too, all you got to do is look at the mass incarceration epidemic and all the men that are getting raped right now after being sent to prison for something they did not do. So all of this is connected. All this connects to history. The present was not built in a vacuum. The present comes from history. So I say all that to, 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 to say that there's a bigger context here. Um, Neil deGrasse and Tyson is probably pretty fucked. He's, he's fucked. He's, 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 I, I, again, I, I think I'd be stunned if he's able to get out of this. Um, but I, but and also I think it's very important though for me in terms of balance to say that just because we have this history, that does not mean that Neil didn't do something inappropriate. And for that, there should be an appropriate punishment uh, for that behavior. I don't know if the punishment should lead to the destruction of this man's career because I think that's a serious penalty. Um, and if you can't prove the serious allegation, then you kind of have to deal with the fact that you can only deal with the things you can prove. You can't just sort of let people tell stories and assume that the stories must be true. So um, I don't know. I'm going to see how it goes down. I don't have a horse in the game one way or the other. You know, um, again, I just believe that um, you know, you, you, you choose your path, uh, live by the sword, die by the sword. You know, Neil, Neil, you know, he was really down with white folks. You know, he was like doing that Tiger Woods, Bill Cosby, OJ Simpson thing. And, uh, you know, and, and, and if you know that like that, that whole being white thing, it works well until it doesn't work well. It's, it's good until it's not, you know? Uh, so, uh, cause when they turn on you, your ass is done. Your ass is done. Anyway. All right, do this. Uh, I'm getting out of here. Hit the thumbs up button if you're on YouTube. Uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up before you go. Also, if you want to be on the text list, uh, text the word voice to 31996. Uh, I will text you when I go live. If you text my name voice, text voice to 31996. 
3199.6. Also, um, uh, if you are in Houston and you want to come to our event in Houston, December 8th, uh, you can go to drboycehouston.com. That's drboycehouston.com. Seats are limited. So, uh, in, and the tickets are donation only. So uh, you don't have to have any money to come out. Uh, just go to drboycehouston.com and sign up. You got to let us know what you're coming, uh, if you want to be there or be part of the event. Uh, also, um, what else is going on now? Um, last but not least, uh, if you want to join our League of Intelligent Black People, uh, I believe in black intelligence and our goal through this media outlet is to uh, spread black intelligence throughout the world. So if you want to learn more, uh, go to intelligentblackpeople.com. That's intelligentblackpeople.com. And uh, as somebody says, I know that you're thirsty. You're right, because I'm 9,500 feet uh, above sea level right now. And, um, and I really need to go drink some water. So I'll see you guys soon. Have a good day. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Peace.